Tonight I want to talk to you just a few moments. And the message that I'm kind of giving us the title to, I want to call it God's Way. And uh, we're going to go through two or three and we'll get over to the text in just a few moments. But over the years that we've been married, we was in the Army, not the Navy. <laughs> Our youngest son was born in Columbus, Georgia at the Army base. And uh, we have seen some great days. We have seen some sad days. We have had some wonderful times. We have lived on top of the world. And we've been poorer than two mice, two church mice. We've had times that we've had had two nickels to rub together. But every time that we have been, the whole time we've been together, God has took care of us. We've left for singings in Powder Springs, Georgia, which is on the west side of Atlanta, Douglasville, Austell, Mableton. Powder Springs and drove to the far side, east side of Atlanta, of Atlanta and met a group we was playing, uh, singing, playing with, and went to where they was going to go with a quarter tank of gas in our car and no money in our pocket. There's no way in the world we would able to make, make that trip both ways. But Brother Ed, we never one time run out of gas. Not one time did we ever break down on the side of the road. When we went professional with singing full time, we bought an old bus from Kenny Rogers. It was in good shape. It's fixed up. And we never missed one concert, one singing the entire time. We did break down once on the side of the road, and then we broke down once in the motorhome, but we didn't miss a singing. Let me tell you, God will take care of you if you are taking care of things for God. We have been through ups and downs and ins and outs, but God has never changed. He's always been there. And he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he asked one simple thing. Is to put him above everything else. And honey, let me tell you, that's God's way. God's way is not only the best way, but it is, according to my Bible, it's the only way to heaven. And I know... Oprah, I have a, I need my, my slide changer. God, I can't get any good help around here. I was supposed to pick that up, and I did. He's getting it for me. Thank you for bailing me out once again. I know Oprah headed up, and there was a pastor, I think he's pulled his name off of the book. He's got so much flack about it. He's pulled his name off of it, but the name of the book was The Many Ways to Heaven. Folks, let me tell you, my Bible says there's one way. And if we don't go through Jesus Christ, we're not getting there. I don't care how many believes it. I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many movies they make about it. It does absolutely nothing. It don't change the Word of God. And the Word of God is what's going to stand. And here, let me just go and throw this in while I'm going down this rabbit trail here. Is when you stand before God, your life is going to be judged against what the book says, not what you thought it said. It's not what somebody told me it said. It's not what such and such preached it said. Honey, I preached this morning and told you that nobody can receive salvation for you but you. You are responsible for what you do. You're responsible for what you take in. You're responsible for what you believe and what you believe needs to be based on the Word of God. Amen. 
So I'm calling this God's way. And uh, we're not, this is not the text, but I'll get to it in a minute. John 14, 3. I wanted to start with, the, for all you people that don't like the Old Testament, I'm going to start with a new verse here. It's uh, Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now that is a promise that you can write on a rock. That is a promise that we need to hold near and dear to our heart. Everything that in this word, in the book, is true and correct, it falls into two categories. Either it has happened or it will happen. And honey, let me tell you, the what will happen is get mighty, mighty thin. Because there are more and more things going on. Things that are happening that the book said is going to happen. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. We find in the church denominations in the world of, of church, people call and say, uh, well, is the, is the name of the place we're going to heaven? Is it the third heaven? Is it New Jerusalem? Is it the kingdom of God? Honey, let me just straighten this out for you right now. I don't care what you call it. It doesn't make any difference to me, the name of it. What makes a difference to me is if Jesus is going to be there and I can be there with him, that's the only thing that matters to me. I don't care what you call it, what you say it may be. I simply want to be with him. And this scripture guarantees that if I will hold on to him, he will hold on to me, and honey will make it. I've been criticized, I've been talked about, I've uh, been stabbed in the back, so to speak, by people that I thought was my friend, and things that's going on, but I, honey, let me tell you something, Jesus has never let me down. He has never turned his back on me, and everything that he has promised, he has kept true. We, we recorded a song, the very one, of the, or the last album that we recorded, Ben Spear wrote a song for us, and it said, I, I played it for you here one time, but it said, I'll serve him today because he was faithful yesterday. And if you will serve God just though he let you down one time, honey, you'll never turn your back on him. He'll always be there. Now let me tell you something else for you skeptical and you doubters. It may not be the way that you're planning on it. The ideal that you've got and the way that you've got this planned out, I can pretty well tell you it probably is not going to go that way. But if you will turn it over to God, and if you will say, God, whatever that you need to do, just do it. God, whatever you want to happen, just make it happen. If we will resume what we're supposed to be, and that is a servant to God. We a lot of times get this mixed up and we think God is our servant. And we need something and we pull him out of our pocket, rub it three times and say, I want this to happen and stick it back in your pocket. But honey, let me tell you, my Bible says he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the almighty. He is the great I am. And honey, we are his servants. We need to assume our role is God's way. Let me remind you that there are 37 books in the Old Testament. There are only 29 in the New Testament. And everything from the Old Testament through the New Testament, my Bible tells me that every scripture he impressed upon somebody to write. He gave them the words to write. So it don't matter if he said it, if he thought it, if somebody else wrote it down, it's still God's word. And we can still learn from everything in it. 
The Bible does not change. God does not change. His will does not change. Hold on. And what the world defines as sin, it does not matter. They keep becoming more liberal and more open to God. And what's wrong with churches nowadays is they've tried to identify so much with the world that they've kicked God out of the churches. Just might as well go and say that's true. It's more important to have numbers than it is to have souls. And when I stand in front of, of God and He says, You was appointed a shepherd, you know one of the questions He will never ask me, how many members did you have? What was your greatest attendance? You know, all the things that you give in a bunch of pastors and preachers at these ministers' meetings, those questions always come up. What's your average morning attendance nowadays down there at Nocatee? What, what, what y'all doing with numbers? It's always about how many people you got. But when I stand before God, it's not going to be how many people do you have. It's how many souls did you win? Brother Paul, I am so sarcastic, I guess. People say to you, do you believe that there's church of God people that's not going to go to heaven? Mark in the morning radio show is wanting me to start doing a program with him. Just honest answers, I think, is what we want to call it. The last time I was on the radio with him, he said, well, how about people going to heaven? It seems like everybody thinks they're going to heaven. I said, Mark, only thing I can tell you right now is there's a lot of people that says, I'm going to heaven that's not going to be there. So let me go back. Do you believe all the people in Church of God is going to heaven? No. Do you believe the 430 churches, Church of God in Florida, all of them is going to heaven? No. Hold on to your seatbelt. How about the people that go to Nocatee Church of God? Honey, it would please me to no end if everybody in here made it to heaven. But I'm sorry to say that there's still some play in church. There's still some that comes to church out of habit instead of out of worship. They're still coming to church when they can, when they want to, instead of when the doors is open. Folks, let me tell you, we need to get our priority back. If we want to be the church that stands on the Word of God, we need to start living the church of God. Amen. God does not change God's way. Every story in the Bible we learn something from. If you want to turn with me, we're going to read six verses out of Genesis. And uh, by the way, that's the Old Testament. I don't know if everybody knew caught that or not. But we're going to read six verses in Genesis. Starting with verse number 10. Everybody ready? Thank you, darling. Everybody ready? Verse number 10, And God called the dry land earth, and gathering together of the water called he seas. And God saw that it was good. 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Number 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was itself after its kind and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Number 14. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven divide the day from the night and let them be for signs for the season, for the days and the years. 
And let them be for the lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Number 16 is where I'm taking my text from. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. The lesser light to rule the night. He also made the stars. Brother Bobby, would you ask God's blessing? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for your messenger, God. Let him deliver, deliver this message tonight that you put on his heart, God. Tell, tell, tell the congregation, Father. God, anoint him with the Holy Spirit tonight. Let him get the words where it needs to come, Father, where they we go. Your word is true, God, every bit of it, from the beginning to the end. And we want to hear that word tonight. Take our ears, God, and clean them up where they'll hear this word tonight. Let it go to our heart where our heart will accept it, God, and take it as we leave this sanctuary tonight. We just give you the praise, honor, and glory. Because you're worthy in every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask again. Amen. amen, amen. You may be seated if you can. Genesis 1 and 2, if you start reading through the Bible, that's a good place to start. Uh, but if you read down through it, you find what we call the foundational chapters. It's where everything was formed, where God made everything that is. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, it's comforting to know that I personally have contact with the one that created the universe. The one that made the stars, the one that made the sun, the one that made the moon, the one that separated the day from the night, the one that when there was absolute nothing, the world was without form or void, God was there. He was starting before time started, and he will be there after time shall in. And honey, that's the one that we call Father. That's the one that we call Master. That's the one that we serve to is the one that has the power to speak into existence whatever needs to be. If you read down through there the chapters of things that he did on day four is pouring of the sun and the billions and billions of stars of the galaxy. If you look and see how many stars that, that's out there, it's, it's uncountable. That's a good place for someone to say amen. I mean, you can't see the count, the stars. It's, it's just crazy. And all the stars that was there, and the billions and billions, and I don't know how many galaxies that he made. I don't know how many solar systems he made, but I know that they are just stars and lights that just, just light up the sky, and it's just absolutely beautiful to see all these stars that go by at night, and just to think about the God that we serve, the God that breathe breath of life into our body is the one that formed each one of those stars. And then if you get down to verse number 16 and you read that the actually of all the stars that he formed, he summed it up into five words. He made the stars also, billions of stars, the solar system, divided day and night, made the sun, made the moon, and he sums it up in five words. My screen went blank. Thank you. He made the stars. Also. Okay, can we? Fix? <laughs> Somebody asked me one day, not that I play the piano well, but someone asked me one day, said, would you tell me how to play the piano? And I said, sure, there's only two things you need to know. He said, aren't there a bunch of keys? And I said, yeah, there are 88 notes on there. There sure are. But there are only two things you need to know. Hit the right note at the right time. <laughs> so if the screen goes black, it's fixed. It. Is it running off battery, the power? Oh, 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 oh. I won't do that again. 
So he said the moving background plays through and then it stops. So we'll, anyway, so move it off that background. We'll do something else. Okay. But he had five words he used to sum up of all the stars that he made. Imagine all the planets, the solar system, and he writes five words about it. He made the stars too. Now I want you to hold that thought. I'm going to get back to that just in a minute. So this is not a rabbit trail. I'm changing subjects. If you also read the Old Testament, you'll also find out there's another word in the Bible that's pretty prominent. It's called tabernacle. Do you remember any words about the tabernacle? Okay. How many words did he use to describe the tabernacle? See, it wasn't just two or three words. It wasn't five words. It wasn't just one verse. It wasn't just one chapter. If you read the Bible through what you'll come to find out, there were five, zero, 50 chapters in the Bible that's talking about the tabernacle. Five words describes the solar system and all of the stars, but 50 chapters is about the word tabernacle. Do you have any clue, any idea about all the tabernacle, all the verses in the tabernacle? Why, why there's so many verses about the tabernacle? Let me just sum it up for you quick and easy. God is more concerned with the salvation of the people than he is the own creation that he put together. See, God loves you so much that from the beginning of time he had a plan of where he would have all of his children to come home. The Bible said that he used to walk in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. Can you imagine every afternoon in the cool of the day when the sun would go down God himself would show up and say, hey, Ed, let's go take a stroll down through the park. Let's walk down through the garden. Honey, what, 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 I, can you imagine when we get to heaven walking down the streets of gold or walking down the streets with God and for himself? Honey, let me tell you, this is his plan to have fellowship with me and you. It was his plan to be with you. He desires to be with you. He desires to do things for you. Only thing he asks is, is that you put me first. Matter of fact, that's my favorite scripture in the Bible, Matthew 6.33. I put it on the Christmas cards a couple years ago. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all this other stuff will be added to you. See, where we get into the problems at is that we don't put him first. We start out seeking him. God, I need you. God, I need you to bless my business. God, I need you to bless my health. God, I need you to do such and such for me. And then Tom, he takes us through rehab. He reestablishes our legs. He gives us strength again to walk without a walker. He gives us the ability to do things. And then all of a sudden we decide that I'm too busy to go to church today. You know there's a big game coming on tonight, so I'm just going to skip church today. And... Well, I used to pay tithes. But, I mean, now then, my tithes would be so much, I just, I just don't think that's right. I shouldn't have to give God 10%. I'm just telling you what people say. Let me, let me tell you this. If you don't think you're making enough money, the way I read the Bible, if you'll pay tithes on what you want to make, I'm telling you, God will put you in that category. I, did you hear what I said? 
If you're not making enough money, pay tithes on what you need, and God will put meet your need. He may not increase your social security check. He may not, do, but he will stretch what you've got enough to cover to equal it. Your gas will go further. Your light bill will be less. Your grocery bill, heaven's sake, look, wouldn't we like to have a little less on our grocery bill? Come on. If we'll just serve God and do what the Bible says, in other words, if we'll just do it God's way instead of our way, God then will be in position to bless us. The reason the tabernacle was in it so much is because it's so important. See, in the old Bible days, the word tabernacle was a symbol for God. Do you know why every time that they started to move, there's even the instructions how to build a portable or how a mobile tabernacle that they could take with them. It's how many sticks do you need and how long they need to be and you need to place them at such and such. The detail, the actual insignificant, what we would call reading, but it's actual detail of what God wants for a tabernacle. Honey, let me tell you what that is telling you that he has got an exact plan for your life. It's already laid out. It's already planned out and all all we have to do is simply follow the plan. Did you also notice that in those 50 chapters as pertaining to the tabernacle, we'll get off that screen quickly because it's going to shut down. That everything that God does, they're intense detail. Can you imagine? I'm just, I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Probably the way I read it, Moses had explicit instructions what to do to bring the children out of Israel. When they come into the valley, King Pharaoh's army was coming up behind him. There's mountains to the right, there's mountains to the left, and a sea in front of them. And could you just hear them good old Church of God folks start complaining? Look where you got us now. Boy, we're dead for sure now. Why didn't you just leave us alone? At least we was happy and we got to eat. Now we're going to be killed. He's going to come in here and slaughter us. Can you just imagine all that he heard? If you want to hear some of that, I'll forward my phone to you next week and let you take a few calls. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. God's instructions was explicit. What he told Moses to do, did it work? Yes. When Noah started to build a boat, he wasn't a boat builder. But God said, here's your plans. You build it this long. You build it this wide. This is the kind of wood that you put in it. This is everything that you need. Now, I, I honestly think Noah was probably a pretty smart man. I really do. If you've had a chance to go through this replica they built in Kentucky called the Ark, and you walk through there, I'm telling you, it's amazing, amazing, all the things that you see when you walk through there, things that I've never thought of before. That had to be the, not only did they have animals on there, but they had to have feed for the animals on there. Not only had to have feed, but they had to have water. Hello? And how they had to have the animals divided. Honey, it is amazing. It took an absolute master to figure this out. Well, let me tell you, I served that master. And he made the boat so that it wouldn't tilt over. He made the boat so it would stand the waves. He made the boat so it would carry the weight. Honey, let me tell you, he had every detail down perfectly. 
And we wonder why do I want to follow what God says? It's because he's got your life pegged down. He's got it written out. He had a plan for you before you was even born. But the problem of it is we think we know more than God and we want to do it our way instead of God's way. If we had just simply turned back to God and said, God, if you will open the door that you want me to go through. How many of you have ever prayed for a closed door? See, most everybody says, open the doors, God, open the door. Open the windows of heaven, Father, and pour me out a blessing that I'm not able to receive. But honey, let me tell you something. Sometimes we need to pray for God to close the doors that we don't need to go through. That is a move of God just as much as opening another. Because do you know you can falsely identify with something that looks good, smells good, sounds good until you get in it and then it's too good you can't get out. Hello? I hear a big yes sir over there. Folks, let me tell you something. What we need to do is start trusting God from the beginning to the end and all the way through. If he had all this figured out for Noah, he had all this figured out for Moses, he had all this figured out for Daniel, he had all this figured out for the three Hebrew children. Now wait a minute. But you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says God has no respecter of persons. If he will do it for them, he'll do it for you. So why don't we trust him? Why don't we do it God's way? Why don't we just forget about all the problems and say, God, these are not my problems, these are your problems. God, why don't you just give me the answers that you want me to say? God, why don't you just direct my feet to take me where I need to go? God, why don't you just put in my mind the thoughts of what I need to think? God, I just want to do it your way. How much simpler would our life be? Do you know that a lot of times that I'm praying for people and the devil says, well, what if they don't get better? You know, we prayed for a guy two weeks ago, Albert Rose. Keith came in and said, we need to, I said this out on the prayer line and he'd had surgery. They couldn't get him to wake up. He was in ICU on the ventilator. Albert didn't make it. He went on home to glory. But honey, let me tell you, the devil will say, well, what if they don't get better? To make you look stupid. Why did you pray for them? Why did you speak to that sickness and then they not get better? Honey, let me tell you something. I'm not the one that can heal you. I'm not the one that can save you. I'm simply going on your behalf asking the healer to touch you. And if he touches you, that's his business. If he don't, it's still his business. Honey, I don't know his detailed plan. They may be somebody that says, like old Job. You remember when the devil come to God and said, let, let, let me have Job. I mean, look, at it. he's serving you. Well, yeah, of course he's serving you. Look, look, you, you give him everything he's Every time he turns around, you're blessing him with this, you're blessing him with that. Why would he not serve you? Why don't we just take all that away and then see who he's going to serve? <laughs> yeah, God said, okay. You can take anything he's got except his life. So he's lost all of his children in one day. He lost all his cattle, all his possessions in one day. He lost everything. His wife even come to him, and I'll take a little different approach on this. Maybe you differ with me, and you've got the right to do that. 
But I believe that his wife loved him so much that she was tired of seeing him suffer with the boils and sitting in the ashes. I think she loved him so much that she just didn't want him to see him suffer anymore. And she said, Joe, why don't you just curse God and die? I can't stand to see you this kind of pain. I can't stand to see you go through what you're going through. I just want you to get out of this misery. I think it was from a loving approach. But either way, it was the wrong advice. And Job said, no, even if he slayed me, I still am going to serve him. Now, here's a crazy thing. I want you to know that when God started giving back to Job, you know, he gave him twice as much cattle, he gave him twice as much of everything except children. He didn't give him twice as many children. Do you know why? No, because of the children that he had is going to be the same children that he gets when he goes to heaven. So he'll have the children that he had and he'll have the children that God gave him. So when he gets to his real life, he'll still have twice as many. Huh. Every now and then I hit on a good note. Every now and then. God has got your life already planned. He's got every detail worked out. He knows how many feet you need to do this, how many inches you need to do that. All he needs is your cooperation. What we need is do it God's way instead of our way. Sure, would you go to the piano, please, honey? Every day when we get up, our prayer needs to be, God, let me do your will today. God, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say, God, I want to do your will today. I know the world's going to come against me. I know it's going to be difficult. But God, give me the strength. Give me the courage. Give me the ability to do what you want me to do. My Bible says that there's only one way to heaven. And what we need to be doing is getting back to serving God the one way. And that's God's way. We need to get our big ideas out and say, God, it's all about you. It's all about you, God. Use me. Take me. Do what you want me to do. And Lord, if it's, if you get more glory out of not healing me, so be it. I'm still going to serve you. If you get more glory out of healing me, then heal me. God, whatever you want me to do, I want to serve you. I want it to be your way. I want you to just think about this just a few moments. Are you really living your life God's way? Or are you just saying you're living it God's way? Are you really doing what God wants you to do? Or are you doing what you want to do and blaming the bad stuff on the devil. And the, honey, let me tell you, if you'll serve God with everything you've got, God will make a way. God will make a way. Would you find your place to pray?